that patients with follicular lymphoma, um, you know, because they, in most cases, will live for decades, which is a good thing, and most people will have a, a fairly normal life expectancy, unfortunately not all, but most, um, having treatment options for patients, particularly uh, as they've been through other treatments, uh, having additional options um, for when they need them is an important thing. So the, the oldest treatment has been chemotherapy and one would also say radiation therapy. Uh, there is a drug rituximab, which is a monoclonal antibody that's been part of therapy uh, for follicular lymphoma now uh, going back um, over 20 years. There are newer versions of rituximab, such as obinutuzumab, which has been approved for some settings as well in follicular lymphoma. Um, and then um, over the last few years, we've had some new categories of drugs that are not chemotherapy or antibodies. Uh, these would include uh, lenalidomide, which is uh, a pill that is uh, added to rituximab and has been approved within the last year in that setting. Uh, additionally, we have what are termed PI3 kinase inhibitors, which are another category of drugs that target uh, an important uh, pathway in follicular lymphoma. And we have several of those that are approved. So um, that being said, uh, there are limitations in, in many of those therapies. Um, and so what we now have is the approval of tazimetastat. Tazimetastat is an inhibitor of uh, a target called EZH2. Mutations for EZH2 are seen in a subset of patients with follicular lymphoma, but EZH2 is also relevant to those patients who don't have uh, a mutation in EZH2 because the EZH2-associated pathways are still relevant even if they're not turned on or, or activated through a mutation. So uh, tazimetastat is uh, approved both in patients who um, have, so in patients with relapsed or refractory follicular lymphoma, and it's approved in patients who either have an EZH2 mutation where the response rates to the drug are roughly 70% uh, or so. Um, and it's also approved for patients who do not have the mutation or who do not have satisfactory alternative treatment options. And so, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's open to some interpretation and application to the patient. But uh, for patients who have been through chemotherapy, have been through some of the other treatments out there for whom this oral drug which is generally pretty well tolerated, uh, this gives that group an additional option as well. So I think it's one more option for patients with follicular lymphoma um, where, uh, you know, it's an oral agent that patients can take at home, is pretty well tolerated, and uh, gives people an option um, perhaps after some of the other treatments uh, either have not worked or the disease has relapsed or may not be uh, good options for the patient, i.e. they have uh, significant chemotherapy-associated toxicities and other things that may make them less attractive to a patient.